Where's my uh, camera can handle this with battery? Hi, we're Vice Moth. Yo, we're Vice Moth. And we're going to be in Anfield today, aren't we? Yes, at the Home Baked Market. Yes, to encourage people to think a little bit about Everton Library. Yes. Mosey on up there, looking at the wildflowers. Looking at the wildflowers. And, um, you know, chat to us and chat to some people with some more solid information about that kind of thing. <laughs> Well, it would be great if you could just give us a few details on what this is. This is the first market from Home Bake Community Land Trust who are trying to restore this whole terrace here um, and bring it back as a mix of housing and retail and stuff. Oh. We've got planning permission to do it. They're going to have a brewery at the end and they, they want to grow this market and do more of it. So that's what it is. Yeah, every, every space around here we kind of look at with envy because we we just imagine the, the flowers arriving. So this could be another one, in, uh, which, you know, it's a, quite a nice grassy space, but it could be a lot more, more colourful. Ha, have yeah. these always been empty or did, were there houses on them? I think it here was, it was it was probably demolition actually, yeah. previously. It was like, um, it, it wasn't a very good word, but this was part of what they called the pathfinder zone. Path so they, which? Pathfinder. Path but it was finder. an excuse for knocking down really nice terrace houses. Oh no! You to so, find some is this a bit landfilly then? Yeah, I think it, 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 it's kind of brick rubble and... Yeah, yeah underneath. Underneath, so... Mm -hmm. But it would be great for flowers. So we'd love but you've been stuff. working with All Saints Anfield, haven't you? And All Saints are a brilliant school. And they, they've been protecting spaces and crowdfunding for... Yeah, and they're real advocates stuff. for backyard nature. So it's it's, it's great because it is literally putting nature on people's doorsteps. It seems like a no-brainer, really, but... Is there a sort of like sense that if certain people had their way, they, these would all be built on? Um, hopefully that era's gone, okay. um, so that's the good thing. And in Liverpool, there's this thing called Fields in Trust, which is putting all the parks and spaces into into like a special zone. And Liverpool actually is the first city to do that. There's, there's loads of little specks, aren't there, that are popping up everywhere now of the wildflower. And I always think of you guys and think, does that they do that? But you know. You're about 30 yard in Liverpool, haven't you? Yeah. And, um, like but it is true that when you get a plot like this, housing people might want it, but the parks are protected now at least for 100 years. Oh, wow. So now we need to find ways of protecting some of the smaller spaces and colouring up the smaller spaces. Around here, here there was a real tradition of, like, uh, they sing on the terraces about the fields of Anfield Road, which is... Uh, a song which was borrowed from actually Ireland, the fields of Athen Rye. So in a way, we could we could really colour up Anfield with the fields of flowers. Yeah. <laughs> and do you know that song? Do you know the words to it? Ooh. It's delicious. That fly yeah. on that. Oh, they do I smell think, lovely. I think in Italy, it's got this. <laughs> it's kind of like elderflower cordial. That's yeah, yeah. Cool. I love that stuff. Yeah. So. I've never had the real thing though, but literally you can just make a batter. It's a holy bible. Oh, a cat goes mad for it. Really? It's a good way, isn't it? So you've been doing this for 30 years. Yeah. So, I mean, there must have been a, a, a battle and stuff like that at times. It was, yeah. I mean, people just thought we were crazy. And um, I met somebody actually, where was it? The other, the other actually in, um, in Morecambe, who was, he was in Liverpool in the, in the 70s. And he said, oh, you know, because he was, he was quite intrigued by Wildflower Story in Liverpool. And he said, um, well, you know what a Liverpool lawn is, don't you? Because um, he used to teach in Liverpool, in sort of central Liverpool. And he said, well, they just used to paint the playgrounds green. <laughs> and there was that kind oh. of thing, you know, it was yeah. like, you know, like it was just so much built up areas. And it was, it was the utter contrast. And the other thing was people didn't really believe that anybody wanted it. So the, the park managers and the people who would cut the grass um, would just say that people didn't want it. It's so um, stop. <laughs> which is crazy because we all obviously love it. Everyone's, everyone loves so seeing is, the flowers. So it is that and, kind of sea change, isn't it? Yeah. All, all that stuff to, you know, that we did in, I guess it was maybe the 60s onwards, where it was like an increasing obsession with like... You know cleanliness and sort of you know sanitization of everything basically i'm sure it all ties into it yeah, it yeah. As well. getting well, rid of weeds getting yeah. rid of things the whole tower block to. thing i mean the thing about you know everton park it went through this kind of two-phase thing where they knocked all the terraces down and the communities kind of got hammered and then they built 
you know, it's that thing about people should live in the sky, mm. um, which didn't work. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like we have to go to full circle, isn't it? Looks like so that's they're big. alive. No, um, that's what the bug leaves behind. It leaves like a. What's the bug? Secretion. It, it keeps yeah. it. You should be able to see it actually amongst it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's just a spit of a cooker. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Called a frog hopper. Is it hot? I don't know. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to hop very right. Genu- the gen- They're more likely to be blue. I think as they go wild, uh, as garden varieties, they were probably more different colours but they, they, they seem to kind of go to this kind of purple colour more than anything. So what else have we got in here then? We've got but- quite a variety. I mean there's there was loads of cowslips which you probably saw some up there which are set in seed. So that was remarkable a few weeks ago. But this is coming through with ladies' bed straw which is what's this cuckoo spits on. That's yeah, ladies' used to bed make straw. mattresses out of it. Um, oh right. And wow. edge bed straw. So you know like there's a whole cultural story behind that. There's buttercups, there's, there's um, some of the clumps and things that are there will be things like knapweeds, um, there's field scabious, which is a great pollinator. There's the cow parsley, which is intermingled with the lupin here, which um, really gives it, you know, like a, a beautiful effect, really. You could get confused with the cow parsley, couldn't you, and think it was the elderflower or the... It is a bit like elderflower, yeah. Or the, uh, what, what's that other one? Hog, hogweed. Yeah, they're you know, the same family. Similar, yeah, yeah. Some, some what they call umbellifers, like umbrella, like. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hogweed, though. There's be careful, burn carrot. your hand off. There's what? wild carrot coming through, mm-hmm. but this this haze down the bottom, the kind of purple haze down the bottom, is is vipers bugos, which is remarkable pollinator. Um, vipers bugos. So, so and um, Carl Linnaeus, who was the son and founding father of like biological classification. So in terms of Latin names and this binomial naming of plants, which is, you know, worldwide system. Um, so he was sort of pre-Darwin, I think. Just um, And he didn't really give many opinions about his individual favourites, but certainly Vipers Bugus was one of them. Um, and he said there was nothing to surpass a field of Vipers Bugus in flower. Um, and that's exactly what's starting to happen down the bottom. And that is a really remarkable sight. So you'd have to go maybe to the South Downs or somewhere like that. But it's, it is really National Nature Reserve territory, really. But the beautiful thing is it happens in happens here. Why is there this weird distinction that people make between, you know, the ones that you keep in the house, like, you know, cut flowers and that kind of thing, and desirable plants versus these? Well, I suppose it's it's about people's prescriptions, isn't it, about what's what's what they think should be there. Um, but nature knows no boundaries, so there'll always be... And that's why cities are probably more biodiverse than the countryside now, because you get this incredible mix of culture just like you know people and, and like a city like Liverpool has an incredible mix of cultures it's the same with the plants you know yeah. and each of these plants has its own like cultural story that's the lockdown story isn't it it's remarkable yeah. how if, if things are moan and moan and moan suddenly if it stops there's like an opportunity for things to show themselves and, and you know there's lots of things like bee orchids and things that can pop up in cities that you know have probably been sitting there trying to fly off for a decade. Yeah.